high doses of caffeine given to laboratory mice caused them to have arrhythmias and all the mice in the study eventually died. So what conclusions can we make from this type of study? The conclusions are scientists are mean to mice. In all seriousness, I had a patient a couple years ago and he was a young guy, 35 years old, and he was using energy drinks and he was drinking coffee and he just never thought about how much caffeine he was ingesting. And he was just doing it to get through his job and, and stay awake. He was also a, a mountain biker. And so he would go out riding his bike and he was really pushing his body hard. You know, that play hard, work hard, ride hard type of philosophy. Well, eventually he started having arrhythmias in his heart and his doctor told him that he needed to get off coffee and it was really hard for him. And it took him a number of years for his heart to actually recover. Now he was lucky because he didn't have a problem, but in this video, we're gonna discuss the effects of caffeine on your heart and your blood pressure. Now, what do we know about caffeine? Well, first of all, we know it's a stimulant. We know it raises the heart rate. We know it raises the blood pressure. We know it's a good pick-me-up. It gives you lots of energy and it does it very quickly because it's extremely quickly absorbed. So when you have a cup of coffee or an energy drink or just some type of gel with caffeine in it, it will be absorbed extremely quickly and efficiently. And what that means is if you're ingesting 100 milligrams of caffeine, your body is getting 100 milligrams of caffeine. And many people are using caffeine as a way to create lipolysis, which is a fancy way of saying that their body actually will try to burn fat and convert it into glucose so that they actually will accelerate the speed with which they lose weight. But what about blood pressure? What effect does caffeine have on our blood pressure? Well, let me tell you the ways. When you ingest caffeine, your blood pressure will go up within 30 minutes and it will continue to rise and it will peak within about four to six hours. After about six hours, about half the caffeine is still in your system and it can take up to 10 hours before that drink is out of your system. And it does this for people that don't even have high blood pressure. So what's it doing to people that actually have high blood pressure? The research has shown that anywhere between 200 to 300 milligrams of caffeine can raise your systolic blood pressure by eight points and your diastolic number by six points. So if people are drinking more than that per day, then those numbers would be even bigger. You add energy drinks to it, and it's through the roof. The same amount of caffeine will stimulate your adrenal glands to produce adrenaline over 200% increase, which raises your blood pressure. The caffeine is also a vasoconstrictor, so it will constrict your arteries, raising your blood pressure. Now this is, of course, if someone has high blood pressure and you're taking medication to try to lower your blood pressure, this is very, very important to understand that the caffeine is doing the exact opposite and it doesn't take that much caffeine to actually do that type of job. Sadly, our bodies adapt to caffeine just like it will adapt to any drug. And so as time goes on, in order to stay awake, in order to create lipolysis, in order to feel energized throughout the day, most people have to drink more and more coffee to get that feeling. The problem is, is that more and more caffeine will continue to raise your blood pressure. The long-term effects, however, because our body does adapt to the caffeine, and it is believed that if you just maintain the same amount of caffeine per day, let's say 200 milligrams of caffeine, and you maintain that, initially, let's say for the first six months, your body will have radical changes in the blood pressure. But as time goes on, because your body adapts to it, in theory, the effect of blood pressure won't be as bad. So what they say is, and they say this almost about everything, is, well, you should ingest caffeine in moderation. What's my opinion? I say bull. Moderation is just a cop-out to say we don't know the answer and we don't even study nutrition, so just don't do a lot of it. That's essentially what moderation means. So if we know that caffeine raises your blood pressure, if we know it raises your heart rate, 
if we know it does all these things on a temporary basis and it takes literally 10 hours to get out of your system, if you plan on doing that every single day, then it makes sense that caffeine is not something that you should be ingesting. So is it a yay or nay? In my book, it is something that should not be ingested at all if someone has high blood pressure. Now I understand that it's extremely popular to use coffee to try to lose weight. So many people are drinking a bunch of coffee with MCT oil or butter in their coffee and in an effort to try to lose weight. I get it. We all want to be thin. We all want to look good. But when you consider that meth, cigarettes are also things that you could ingest in moderation and those would help you lose weight, it doesn't make you a healthy person. So don't be a thin guy with high blood pressure. Focus on becoming a healthier person and this is the important part. At the end of this video, right in this corner, there's gonna be a box and it is a complete video. I know it's long, but what I would suggest that you do is when you have time, you watch that video, get a pen and paper handy and take notes because there are many healthy options that you can do to lower your blood pressure and caffeine is not something that you want in your system.